Hello, pastors, seminarians, and saints around the world who attended the Shincheonji online seminar on the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. It is nice to meet you. I am Kim Woo Nam, a center instructor taught by the leader of the Busan James tribe out of the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader was taught by the chairman of Shincheonji, Lee Man Hee. I hope this time will be a precious one to become one in God for those who have the hope of heaven and eternal life, which is the purpose of our faith. The words I will testify today will be the introductory lesson 24, the process of growth to be born again and the faith of perseverance. Some of our pastors here may know about this, and some may not. But today, I hope that you will listen to what I am explaining about this one more time, and that you may all reach heaven and eternal life. First, let's read the reference verse for today. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. And touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Yes, you've read well. The verses are from approximately 2,600 years ago when God chose the prophet Jeremiah and put the word of God in his mouth. And we see God gave the prophet Jeremiah the mission to uproot, tear down, destroy, overthrow, to build, and to plant. Here, when it says to uproot, what is to be uprooted, and what should be overthrown when it says to tear down, destroy, and overthrow? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, the Apostle Paul compared people to fields and buildings. To call a person a building means that someone can enter and dwell inside of it and what enters into a person is a spirit. The person's action changes depending on which of the two spirits enters and governs that person. Therefore, to uproot means to uproot the weeds from a person's heart and to plant means to plant the good seed, which is the word of truth. And when it says to tear down and overthrow, it is about tearing down the temple of the heart that was built incorrectly through the falsehood, which is a temple of the heart of Satan. And when it comes to building something, it is about building the temple of the heart through the word of truth so that God's Holy Spirit can dwell inside of it. Therefore, the appointed task given to the prophet Jeremiah is the work of uprooting, tearing down, and destroying, which is the work of judgment, as well as building and planting, which is the work of recreation. This is what was spoken about through the works of the promised pastor comparing to the prophet as said in Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. So the mission given to Jeremiah was the mission or duty for Jesus at the first coming. And at the second coming, it is the mission or the duty for the promised pastor. Therefore, Jesus, who was a promised pastor approximately 2,000 years ago, uprooted the devil's seed, tore down the temple of the devil's heart, and then planted the seed of God and established it as God's temple, to build a house for God to dwell in. Then what did Jesus, the promised pastor, recreate? As said in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1, He recreates the spirit of the heart. 
Only when we are recreated as a house where God can dwell can we have God within us and enter the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. So what is the purpose of our life of faith? Everyone in attendance at this event now would know this. It is heaven and eternal life. It is not easy to walk the path of faith with the objective of heaven and eternal life, but there are necessary steps to take in order to achieve this objective. The first is to be born again, the second is a process of growth, and the third is the faith of perseverance. First, the process to be born again. In order to become a child of God through the seed of God, which is the Word of God, what must we be born again of? It is a spirit that must be born again. When it comes to being born again, there is physically being born again, but there is also spiritually being born again. However, since the body cannot be born again, Being born again here refers to the spiritual aspect, that is, the spirit that is being born again. If one was perfect from the beginning, there would be no need to be born again. But because there is something initially wrong with that first part, it is saying that the person must be born again into a better being. Also, a person is told to be born again, because the first spirit and the second spirit is different. It means because a person was not born of God's seed and the Spirit was not of God's Holy Spirit, it is told to be born again through God's seed, the water, and the Holy Spirit. The reason for this is that the first Spirit did not come from God. So it is telling people to be born again through God's seed, which is from God. Second is a process of growth. What grows in this process? In a process of physical growth, an infant is fed only milk in the beginning, then grows through kindergarten to graduate school, to become a mature person, and eat solid food. Likewise, spiritually speaking, a spirit grows by eating the Word of God, which is the spiritual milk, and this is a process of growth for the spirit. If we look at Hebrews chapter 5 and 6, It talks about elementary teachings and the path of perfection. Starting off with the elementary teachings, our spirit grows with the Word of God that is like solid food up to the point of perfection. And this is a process of growth. Third, what kind of faith is the faith of perseverance? It refers to the faith that endures and perseveres when tribulation, persecution, and testing comes in our way. And the result is heaven and eternal life. Then what is the reason for these tribulations and persecutions when it comes our way? The reason for this is that there are two types of spirits in this universe. There is a spirit of the Creator God and the spirit that betrayed, that is, a spirit of the devil. Throughout the 6,000 years of history of the Bible, God had sent many prophets, but in each era, the pastors of the previous eras had killed all of God's prophets. Those who were killed in this way are the martyred spirits. Since Adam's sin, this world has become a world of sin and has been persecuting those who belong to God. The prophets, Jesus, and His disciples all suffered persecution and death. This world, where God is not together with, had become the world of the devil and had continued in this way for 6,000 years until today. 
However, now is a time of the fulfillment of revelation. From this point on, it is the era of God's reign. And God's new kingdom and new people are created. Now the world of sin ends and the world of righteousness begins. Therefore, when you overcome with the faith of perseverance, you will inherit all the blessings that are promised in the Bible. I sincerely hope that through today's word, that all of you will be born again and grow into the word and be victorious through the faith of perseverance. Next, we will look at being born again. First of all, what is the reason to be born again of the seed of God? As mentioned earlier, being born again is not about being born again physically, but it is about what is spiritual, meaning about the spirit that is being born again. If one was completely born of the seed of God and the Spirit of God, and was built into the temple of God, then there would be no need to be born again. However, because one was born of Satan's seed instead of God's seed, and was built into a temple of Satan, not the temple of God, that is why the seed of Satan, the weeds, have to be uprooted. The temple of Satan has to be torn down, and one needs to be born again of God's seed and to be rebuilt as a temple of God. In regards to this being born again, Jesus explained it at the first coming. Let's read John chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. Approximately 2,000 years ago, a Pharisee named Nicodemus a member of the Jewish ruling council came to Jesus and confessed, We know you are a teacher who has come from God. Jesus heard these words, and in verse 3, he said that no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. He said this because the Pharisees at that time were born of the devil's spirit and the devil's seed instead of the Spirit of God and God's seed, so he told them to be born again. Jesus said that you can enter the kingdom of God only if you are born again. To be born again means rebirth. So Nicodemus asked Jesus, How can a man be born again when he is old? Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Everyone, can a person be born and then enter the mother's womb and be reborn? We all know very well that the answer is no. Then, how can we be born again? Let's read the words of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. It says that for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. Yes, he said to be born again through the seed of God's Word. In Luke chapter 8, verse 11, it is said that the seed is the word of God. So you can enter the kingdom of heaven only if you are born again through the word of God. 
Let's also read the words of John chapter one, verses one through four. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. In John chapter one verse one, it is said that the Word in the beginning was God. And in verse 4, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. Furthermore, in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life, the life appeared. Therefore, the Word in the beginning is Jesus. Since God is the Word and Jesus is also the Word, one must be born again through the seed of the Word of God and Jesus. Once again, when it comes to being born again, it means a spirit is born again through the Word of God. And the purpose to be born again through the Word of God is to become a child of God and inherit the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. When we are born again of God's seed, we become God's children. Then who will be the children of God at the second coming of the Lord? I believe that you have already understood it well through the introductory lesson 4, the figurative seed, field, tree, and bird. According to the words of Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, and verses 37 to 43, two kinds of seeds grow in Jesus' field until the time of the harvest. Here, there are those who are born of the seed of God, and also those born of the seed of the devil. Those born of God's seed become the sons of God so that they are harvested and taken to the heavenly barn. On the contrary, those born of the devil's seed becomes the sons of the devil, so they cannot be harvested but remain in the field and end up going to hell. Everyone, now is the time of the harvest. If one is a child of God, should they be harvested or should they remain in the field? Also, if you look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 to 12, there are those who are harvested from the east and the west, and those who are the subjects of the kingdom who are thrown outside. Those harvested from the east and the west will go to heaven as the twelve tribes of the new kingdom in Revelation chapter 7. But the subjects of the kingdom who are thrown outside will go to hell as the corrupt traditional churches of Revelation chapter 6. Everyone who hears these words, let us not stay in the field, but let us become God's true sons who are harvested. So the true sons of God at the second coming of the Lord will be those in Revelation chapter 7, 14, and 21. The 144,000 of the 12 tribes who have been born of God's seed, harvested, and sealed. These are the sons of God whom the creation has been in eager expectation for to be revealed as said in Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Everyone who hears this message, let us become God's children through being born again of God's seed, by being harvested and sealed, and by belonging to the twelve tribes. Next, I will explain about the process of growth. The process of growth is a process in which our inner person grows by spiritually eating the Word of God, 
just as a child grows by eating food in order to become a mature person. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 12 to 14 talks about the elementary teachings and the path of perfection. It says, Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Therefore, we should not just eat the milk-like elementary words as an infant does, but in order to become mature, we should eat the solid food, such as the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, as well as the testimony on the prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant, and we should be able to discern between good and evil. Jesus described this process of growth through the parable of the four fields. As we see in Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, when the seed of the word is sown, there will be a path, a rocky, a thorny field, and also a good soil as well. Jesus explains the four fields in this way. First, those along the path, which is where the birds come and eat it up, are the ones who hear. And then when the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved, it is the words that are taken away by the devil. Next is a rocky field where it withers after the sun comes up. They are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but because they have no root, they believe for a while, and in the time of testing they fall away, meaning that they are those who lose in the testing due to the word. Next is a thorny field. The seed that fell among thorns, it stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. Now, in order to see what kind of field the good soil is, so that it produces a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty-fold, we will take a look at Luke chapter 8, verse 15. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. It is said that the good soil stands for those with a good and noble heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. I hope that all of you who are listening to this word now have the seed of the word planted in your hearts grow and produce crops as the good soil so that we will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven and have eternal life. As you've seen so far, you can reach heaven through the process of growth to be born again. Then what is the most necessary in the process of growth to be born again? It is the faith of perseverance. It is the faith of perseverance that allows us to endure when tribulation, persecution, and trials of all kinds come in our faith. Jesus had said in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, When the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? Therefore, we can see that there will not be many people who have true faith, and that is a reality of the faith of the believers at the second coming according to the words of Jesus. Today, the time of the Lord's second coming is much more important for us, and the Bible prophesizes that there will be trials and persecution today as well. So now, let me share what they are going to be like. Jesus had prophesied about the suffering and persecution that the promised pastor and the people of God's kingdom would experience because of the word at the second coming. 
Let's read Luke chapter 17, verse 25. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Jesus said that in the future he will suffer many things first and be rejected by the generation. Here, this He does not refer to Jesus, but refers to the promised pastor at the second coming. And in John chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, Jesus said that anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. This means that the people of the kingdom of God will be put to death. Even today, it is very sad and unfortunate that four people were persecuted to death while keeping their faith as the members of the Shincheonji Church, the Kingdom of God. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 15, it says that hating a brother is also murder. Hating within the religious world is persecution. In other words, if you cause religious hatred and persecute people because they have different denominations and different doctrines, it is a spiritual murder in God's eyes. Such persecution and hatred kill a person's spirit as well as faith, and even lead to physical murder as well. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said that people will be handed over to the councils and there will be fights and killings between parents and children and brothers and between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. Let's read Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 to 23. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, Do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Jesus said, They will hand you over to the local councils, and all men will hate you because of me. And just as it was prophesied that the workers and the people of the kingdom of God would be persecuted by false pastors and the powers of the world, the workers and people of Shincheonji suffer persecution even today, and these words have come true. The reason for this persecution is because there are two types of spirits. Even though the world of Adam who sinned was wiped out by the flood at the time of Noah, the evil spirit was not wiped out. Therefore, people kept on sinning. However, it is said that this evil spirit can be seized and locked up at the time of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. In the Constitution of the Republic of Korea, Article 20, Paragraph 1 reads, All citizens shall enjoy freedom of religion. And in Article 20, Paragraph 2, no state religion shall be recognized, and church and state shall be separated. According to these words, 
shouldn't one be free to choose one's own faith? However, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said that they would be the workers of God who are unjustly imprisoned and those who will suffer. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus promised His disciples, saying, You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my Father conferred one on me, so that you may judge the twelve tribes of Israel. I hope everyone who hears these words will not be on the side of persecution, but become the children of God who participate in suffering in order to inherit the kingdom of God and eternal life. In Romans chapter 8, verses 17 through 18, it says that we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory, and that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. It says that we should share in the suffering as the children of God because the glory we will receive in the future is much greater. The faith of perseverance is what makes it possible to be able to endure these hardships, the trials, and the persecution. Next, let's read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. He is saying that perseverance is necessary to receive God's promise. Therefore, I earnestly hope that everyone is victorious through the faith of perseverance. Now, let me tell you today's conclusion. The objective of the life of faith is heaven and eternal life. The necessary processes is to be first, be born again. The second is a process of growth. And the third is the faith of perseverance. It is said that we must be born again because we are not born of God's seed. So first, your spirit must be born again in order to become a child of God through the seed of God, which is the Word of God. Next, the process of growth is a process in which a person begins with the elementary teachings, then goes to the Word of Perfection. So this is the process of growth of an inner person. Next, the faith of perseverance will be the unchanging faith that perseveres and endures when tribulation, persecution, and trials come within the life of faith. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, Jesus said that those who stand firm to the end will be saved. I pray that everyone who listens today will be victorious with the faith of perseverance and become the children of God who will inherit the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Did you listen well today? The introductory seminar of the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings is now over today. And the next time, the Intermediate Seminar of the Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter will begin. Starting from the next session, the level of studies is much higher than the introductory level, so an instructor who delivers the Word much better than I will come and testify the Word. I hope that you will attend and have the precious time to receive grace and be able to perceive. Lastly. We will end by shouting, We are one, in the meaning that we are one in God and in Jesus. We transcend races, countries, and religions 
and we are one in God. We are one. Let's pray together. Father God, to whom we are truly grateful, we give you sincere gratitude for your grace and your love. At this time today, all the pastors and seminarians from all over the world became one and shared in the Word of God. Through these words that were given today, I ask that you allow us to perceive who you truly are and the true Word and that you increase in our faith for us to believe in you. Father God, there is much more that will be testified, so please allow everyone in attendance to become one until the end. Allow us to discover heaven and eternal life through your word and have hope in them. Help us all to become your true children, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much for listening until the end.